Oh, that's brilliant. That's good. I was listening to Uncut Hoops, breaking down his own version of Bronny James, and yeah, he was accurate, <laughs> brutal and accurate. But inevitably, the topic of how we ever got to this place came up, which is nepotism. And just let me play this clip from Uncut Hoops, and then we'll go on, because it, it, it kind of summarizes things pretty well. Under five points, under 40% shooting, under 30% from deep, and from a line was pitiful. Bronny James in high school, a five-star prospect, getting 19 minutes per game, was absolutely pitiful. And here's the catch. If I told you that player that production was a top-tier college player in his conference, you'd laugh at me. If I told you that same player was going pro to claim for the draft, you'd call me a liar. If you told me that player averaged 4.8 points per game, got a four-year fully guaranteed contract in the NBA as a rookie, you'd say I'm clinically insane. But for Bronny, that's exactly what he got coming out of college. Basically, unless you come up with an absurd excuse for doing this, you're going to be labeled as insane for doing it. Now, God, this has been dragging on forever. You know, it was months ago at the beginning of the summer uh, and throughout the summer talking about uh, Brawny being drafted. And it was really gross and a lot of people were turned off by it. And you know what ESPN did? Uh, you know what the NBA did? They turned around. They just flip it and turned around and made nepotism a good thing. You're like, oh, well. Other people have done it. Now LeBron James is just empowering people. LeBron James is empowering the people that didn't get away with nepotism in the past. Nepotism is nepotism, people. Don't don't use uh, <laughs> bad behavior by other people to justify current bad behavior. But that's really not the strongest point in the nepotism. The, the strongest point in the nepotism is that the people that were arguing on the side of, oh, well, look what all these white owners were doing. They were getting people positions within the organization, positions that didn't raise a stink. You know why? Because nobody cared. Nobody cared. Nobody cared because they're positions none of you have heard of. <laughs> They weren't coveted instant millionaire positions on an NBA basketball team. The type of change that can switch a person from poverty to riches. That's what the Bronny James nepotism deprived people of. That's suppression. That's oppression. That's not helping out a people. That's oppression. Uh, Chris Broussard comes to mind talking about getting staff positions, coaches or other people or owners, owners getting staff positions for family members. Oh my God, that's just crazy. The owner doing a favor <laughs> for a family member. Uh, if the owner wants to hire his dim-witted son as a fry cook, then that's his choice. Uh, if the if the owner decides to allow his dim-witted son to run the organization, that's a different story. Listen, let me read uh, this to you because I decided to look it up. I thought numbers were more powerful than generalities in this particular case. An average NBA organization typically has around 200 to 300 staff members, including players. This number can vary based on the team's size, market, and specific operational needs. But here's a breakdown. Uh, this is a long list, by the way, so I'll try and go through it quickly. So you can have up to 15 players. Coaching staff usually includes the head coach, assistant coaches, plural, player development coaches, plural, and other specialized coaching roles, totally around 10 staff members. Oh my God, did somebody help someone get one of those staff member positions that you never heard of or was even further down the food chain? Medical staff. Uh, I'm not going to read the details of everything, but that can be from five to 10 people. Front office. 
Uh, this includes general manager, scouts, other administrative staff. I think this is probably the range that a lot of these uh, family member uh, favor uh, positions fall into, which can be from 20 to 50 people. Support staff. Wow. Support staff encompasses a variety of roles, including marketing, operations, analytics, communications, personnel, which can add 50 or more staff members. Okay, those are the people that we're talking about when we talk about uh, other forms of nepotism. There may be a couple of other cases throughout history that were, in fact, uh, players getting spots, but nothing like this. A guaranteed, guaranteed one year would have been uh, ludicrous enough. Guaranteed four year <laughs> for someone who hasn't proven a damn thing. <laughs> And no one wanted other than the fake hype that Rich uh, Paul created. Oh, man. Come on. Just just understand the differences. You can put it all under the umbrella of nepotism as, if you want to. But understand the difference of nepotism when someone gets a coveted position versus a position that you would never think about unless someone shoved it in your face. <laughs> Let me be obnoxiously redundant in trying to drive this point home. Let's go back to the numbers that Brawny had. Let's put those on this screen. Okay. Now, now, <laughs> that's for someone getting a spot of 15 players and becoming an instant millionaire. Now, let's uh, look at someone who got a spot on the marketing team. This is the equivalent of someone getting a spot on the marketing team who got a D in his marketing degree in college and still got the job because somebody at the top said, come on, give him a chance. He's just not, you know, whatever. Insert, insert your excuse here. Besides the fact that it's marketing and we're talking about getting a D in college versus somebody who didn't prove himself at all becoming an instant millionaire. You don't even care. You don't even care. Don't, don't try to convince me that you care about a marketing position. <laughs> Stop. This is what's wrong with you people who crap on the old NBA without ever even looking into it or knowing what you're talking about. You don't care what the truth is. You hear the narrative and it's what you want to believe and you run with it. Uh, whoever decided, the marketing team that decided, oh, let's just pretend that nepotism, uh, what LeBron James is actually a good thing. Those of you who just jumped on that and ran with it, F you, please don't reproduce. You're exactly what the problem is. You were offered a way out, an escape from reality, from what was actually happening. Someone gave it to you and you said, oh, I'll take it. Oh, would you like to look at the facts? Would you like to look at the history? No, 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 I'll take it. Anything to keep from looking at reality. There's a topic within the topic here, and that's of a fake sports fan base. You have people who are so removed from the actual idea of competition, going to war against rivals, etc., that they actually accept the idea of the soap opera. And I, whether they truly believe it or not, they are verbally embracing it. Like, oh, it's great. It's great that there's this father and son duo. It's only great if it's great for the franchise. It's only great if it's great for the franchise. If it's just a story for the sake of a story, which, listen, I, I had to leave social media because, man, the human race is ill. Ill. And that's who the LeBron James fan base is. Just distract me with a story. Distract me with anything other than real life. Distract me from anything other than the actual game being played on the court of the franchise I pretend to care about. <laughs> being happy about 
uh, LeBron and his son taking a picture together and being on court together? No. No. Come on. You're just showing us who you really are. Look, if an incredible athlete was joined by another incredible athlete and you're like, man, that's pretty uncanny that they could both be that good at the same time. That'd be one thing, but this was pure manipulation. This was strong arming and he wasn't even very subtle about it. LeBron James holding out on his contracts and pretending like he was ready to leave and all this other crap. Man, it's holding a franchise hostage so that you can have a picture of you and your son together wearing the same jersey. That's not sports. That's disrespecting sports. This is horrifying. It's terrible. Oh, my God. So I, I was hung over when I did my live last Friday. So I think that's when I was talking about the manipulative media lying on LeBron's behalf and like trying to run a story that LeBron James was some sort of a prophet for predicting that this would happen and saying that Bronny James was special and would end up in the NBA. Bronny James is only in the NBA through LeBron James's own manipulation. That's not being a prophet. That's being a manipulator. But for those who aren't willing to think for themselves, if the media is willing to put out a story that says LeBron James is a prophet predicting his son's greatness and you don't bother to look at how terrible his son is, much less how terrible LeBron is now and how terrible the two of them together look. <laughs> I don't know what to say. If you're not interested in looking at reality and just want to share headlines, well, I don't know. That's that's kind of where we live now, isn't it? <laughs>